John chapter number 14. The Bible says, verse number 1, Let not your heart be troubled. And can I say, we could stop right there, and we all got room to shout right there. Because um, if, you, if you live in this life long enough, man, there's every little thing now just, just kind of bothers me and blows my mind and troubles me. But there's a promise there that says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's, capital F, Father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. And whither I go you know and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. The truth and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Father, we love you tonight. God, we are forever grateful, Lord, for your mercy and for your grace. Lord, when Brother Doug mentioned those kids, and Lord, it's absolute pitiful crying shame. Lord, those kids, some of those have, Lord, just turned way south. And Lord, they're, they're going way out there. Lord, we, Lord, they'd sit up here and sing that song, I'm not going to hell, and, and sing God's been good, and sing Jesus rescues me. God, now they're in a spot in their life where they need you to rescue them. But God, one thing I've learned in my life, you will not force any man, woman, boy, or girl to come back home. God, it's a choice. Father, I pray, God, for these little kids. Lord, it's been a blessing, God, leading them this weekend. Lord, to see the excitement in their eyes and just smiling and happy. Lord, I pray they keep that. Because the devil wants to stomp it out and God ruin their lives. But God, I pray there's, there's something inside of them. Brother Doug was talking about this afternoon. That fire just to burn it in their bones. But on the outside, it may get hard. On, Lord, troubles may come their way, but it won't burn the fire out. Yeah. Lord, trouble, trials may come and, and storms may come and, and problems may come and persecutions may come. But dear God, please don't let that fire burn out in their soul. God, I pray you open the windows of heaven. Lord, I ask you to plug me in tonight. God, from another country, God, fill this place with the Spirit of God. Anything that happens, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the praise and honor. Lord, if anything gets done tonight, it'll be 0% man, 100% God. And the church said, Amen. We find here, by way of introduction, four simple things. We find that there is rest found in God. I said the verse while ago, verse number one, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, I don't even turn on the TV no more because only thing CNN and Fox and all this trouble. Trouble, 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 trouble. You talk to people, it's trouble. Uh, but I sure am glad tonight I can rest my head on that soft pillow in that motel room knowing I can have full rest in God. There's a lot of things we cannot put our rest in. We cannot put our rest in our finances. We cannot put our rest in our physical man. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, there's one thing you can push your rest in and that is God Himself. There is the rest. Notice verse number 4. And with I go you know and the way you know Thomas saith unto him Lord we know not whither thou goest and how can we know the way I'm glad God has an answer for every question verse number 6 Jesus saith unto him I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me not only can we find rest but there is a route that is plan. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, 2,000 years ago, God died on the cross for your sins and my sins. God didn't just accidentally do that. God didn't just happenstancely do that. God did that for all of mankind. Yeah. Could you go with me there on, on Calvary, Brother Phil, and see God himself died on the cross. He died for that boy last night. He knew that on a Saturday night he was going to give his heart to God. And God would have done 
done all that all because he could get in. Can I say on that Wednesday night, I'm glad God looked throughout time and saw a 16 year old jacked up preacher's kid and he saved my soul from a devil's hell. Can I say I'm not saved based on my good works. I'm not saved because I'm on Victory Baptist Church Road. I'm not saved because I've been dunked in a pool. I am saved because it's by the blood of Jesus. There's nothing nobody can do to be saved. It's by God and God alone. It's by we got people say hey man you gotta work your way to heaven you gotta do all these good things to get to heaven listen here's my question when's gonna be good enough to stop you gotta keep going and for going I'm glad God done something and it's permanent and it's by God and by God alone we can go to heaven there's the route notice the reassurance we find in verse number 7 through verse number 12 you find I'm not going to read the verses here but you find the word of believe or form of believed is mentioned six times here in just 12 verses listen to this big things will never happen in your life unless you believe big things will never happen in your life until you believe, you say, Jeff, what you talking about? Man, we, we serve God nowadays. We think God's up there super small, and we pray these super small things, and God the whole time saying, hey, I made the mountains. I made the bees. I made the dirt. I made the rocks. I made everything you've got, and you put me about this big. You want big things? Ask big God. Are you tired of, tired of small things? Stop asking small. Ask big. There is the request. Notice verse number 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, look at this, I will do it. I wonder where Nike got that from. Just do it probably come from John chapter number 14 verse number 14 yeah. just do it yeah. God's up there saying hey whatever you want just ask yeah, look at that. you know why God won't send revival nobody asking why, why ain't God saving your family member you're not asking I wonder why God isn't moving in our day and hour let me say this I am glad I don't serve a God who's on an oxygen take tonight I'm glad preacher I don't serve a deaf God I'm glad I don't serve a blind God it looks like some of you serve a blind God and a deaf God man you can't even smile tonight can I remind you our God is not up there in a nursing home our God's not up on a hospital bed somewhere with machines hooked to him God's not up there scratching his head we serve a God who is alive and a God who is well God knows what's going on God is willing God is able he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above but we never ask I got to thinking of this thought here about prayer and one man said this dad said this forever ago prayer can do anything God can do you want something to happen ask as a little kid growing up uh, preacher y'all know this you got kids I used to bug my mom and dad all the time hey can I have this first answer no some of you kids I'm going to give you the trick to life right here alright don't just ask your mom and your mom and daddy not going to like me no more I'm going after this anyway your mamas and daddies they say hey daddy can I have that no alright I'm going to go to mama mama can I have that what would your daddy say no okay no then you go to them give, give them out a day let it pass over go to mama say mama listen I love you you are the most prettiest lady in all the world you are my queen mom I love you from the bottom of my heart what you want son can I have that what would your daddy say no daddy I just want to let you know you're the greatest dad that's ever walked this planet I'm going to get you a number one father's day cup dad you're the best dad in the world what your mama say no you know what I've learned in life? I can preach, I can get 50 missing that, 50 no's. But that one time, I don't know if they turn, turn the light switch on or something, but that one time, I go to them. Mama, can I have this? Listen, be persistent, kids. Be persistent. Get on their nerve. Y'all parents say amen. 
be persistent. Miss Tammy, I'd go up there and say, Mama, I've been really good here lately. Oh, Mama. <laughs> Mama, you can even go check my room. Clean as a pen. A.K.A. all the clothes slubbed underneath the bed. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Preacher, I, I tell my mom, Mama, I'd really like to have that. She said, well, you ain't asked in a while. I guess it'll be all right. And I said, hey, Daddy. She said, I can get it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> can I say, I'm not glad that we don't have to go through that huge, long process with God. Right. We don't have to go to God and say, all right, God, it's me again. Listen, I just wanted you to know this, God. It's, I'm glad God gives answers. I'm glad we serve a God who says yes, no, or wait a while. I'm glad we serve a God who is an on-time God. I'm glad he said, come boldly unto the throne of grace. Jeremiah 33, 3, call upon me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. We serve a God tonight that wants to hear from us, that wants to hear from you, and God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above there's the request John Bunyan said this I know you've heard this in prayer it is better to have a heart without words than words without a heart F.B. Meyer said this the greatest tragedy of life is not unanswered prayers it is unoffered ones how much are we missing in our lives all because we don't ask I'll say this, if you want something bad enough, you go ask for it. I got to thinking about this scripture. We find where God is going home to heaven. We find, Brother Phil, that preacher, that God is going home to build us a place. And can I say direct opposite end of, of heaven, there's a place called hell. Not one time tonight do, if you can find it in scripture, you show me, not one time, preacher, do I find where the devil went down to build a place. Do you realize tonight that hell is a place for demons and the devil himself? We got this generation that tells us, well, you know, a loving God wouldn't do that. A loving God won't send me. To, I had a teenager tell me, preacher, one time, I told him, I, I was preaching like this in a big way. I tell them they're wicked and they're going to go to hell. And they come up to me and they said, Jeff, hell's not real. And if I was to go to hell, God wouldn't be a loving God. I said, you talked about it at lunch today. The only reason God is a loving God is because he's given you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to get right with God and get saved by the blood of Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you know it or not, you can think it's a figment of your imagination or not, standing somewhere right here in this earth, we can go straight down. Man, if we had a telescope or something, that could go all the way down into the middle of the earth. Guess what? There's a place called hell. That was made, may I remind you, for the devil and his angels. I think about it all the time, how hell enlarges and all these volcanoes. Just another one erupted this, after, this weekend. And man, I believe in the Philippines somewhere, another volcano erupted. You know what hell is doing? Hell is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You say, Jeff, who goes to hell? I tell you who goes to hell. Those who do not trust God and go out into eternity. Can I say tonight, preach, I promise I'm going somewhere. I promise uh, you can look tonight in hell. If we could take the lid off hell tonight, there's probably a lot of Sunday school teachers in hell tonight. We could probably pop that lid off, Jordan. There's probably a, a ton of preacher's kids that's just wanting one more opportunity. There's probably a lot of daddies in hell tonight. That's just wanting one more chance. I promise you I'm going somewhere. I promise. There's a lot of mamas down there, preacher, that are begging God. God, just one more chance. It's amazing. Man, it's really amazing. You read over there in Luke 16. Nobody really cared. That, that rich man didn't care about God, didn't give a rip about God, didn't have a burden about God or none of his family until he got in there. You say, Jeff, I'm going to live my life the way I want to. Listen, the other day I saw a man preacher in his 70s get saved. How 
difficult it is for a 70 year old man he said preacher I've sat on the church pew my whole life man I fought I was saved I was a deacon I took up the money I even done Sunday school but he said man I realized tonight I was lost I didn't want to go to hell I forgot about everybody I didn't want to go to hell and he gave his heart to God kids whether you know it or not tonight there's kids tonight who are in the pits of hell not because they was forced there not because it was a vacation not because it was just a trip it's because they rejected God and said no to God tonight I would love to tell you that all of mankind is going to heaven but I can't do it preacher no doubt if we was to lift the lid off hell tonight there's probably men of God supposedly that got up and preached behind a pulpit that's in hell tonight and they'll never get to go to heaven can I say there's probably a lot of grandmas and grandpas who brought their kids to church who brought their grandkids to church was faithful in church gave the right amount of money to God and was faithful back in the pastor and praying and reading their Bible but they never confessed God in their soul and there's grandmas and grandpas tonight if they had the opportunity to tell us they would say please please don't come to hell there's a lot of people tonight if, if I promise you we'd, if we could man lift the lid off hell and let people climb out preacher these altars would be slapped full of people because they realize that there is a place called hell there is a place down there tonight where there's people biting on them they're trying to get the fire out they're trying to get good God Almighty help me they're trying to bite each other to get the fire man the fire is burning them forever there's kids tonight on fire there's mamas tonight on fire there's daddies tonight on fire there's grandmas and grandpas tonight that are on fire sat in the church pew had every opportunity to get saved had every moment to accept Christ but they rejected God and now they're literally burning on fire in hell I wonder tonight church would we be that one that God has given us every opportunity and we said no well I'll just do it later and you end up in a place called hell let me say this tonight preacher you wouldn't have to start a revival if hell was to open her lids You'd be here 24 hours, seven days a week. Here's my thing, church. A lot of us have got to the place and being with them teenagers, man, just I guess just really messed my mind up a lot. Got me to thinking outside the box. Everybody that sits on a church pew isn't saved. Preacher, everybody that says, Amen, preacher, that's good. Not everybody tonight. I hope you are. Dear God, I'm not trying to doubt anything you got. I hope you've got settled peace in your heart tonight. But can I say if you're scared and that scares you, I'm thankful for that because you don't want to go there. You don't want to go there and burn forever. There'll be no water. Man, that rich man just wanted a little drip. That's all he wanted. Can I say once you go into hell, there's no coming back out. You will be on fire forever and forever and forever. You'll never get another opportunity here, man of God. Tell you that God's the way. Man, you need to get your heart saved. It's too late. It's too late. You're stuck in a place called hell. The story tonight would be very, very sad if that's where we stopped. I'm about to feel a preaching coming on. I ain't going to begin to lie to you. Good Lord. The story would be very, very bad, preacher. If only thing humanity had to look to is going to a place called hell. But good gracious, I feel like a cheerleader going on on the inside. I'm glad, I'm so glad, Brother Jordan, that there is an alternative place to hell. 
I'm glad for man. I wish y'all would get with me tonight. Good gracious. Brother Phil, I'm glad that God, man, when he made hell, he didn't say, hey, everybody's going to go. And can I say this? He would have been a just God. He would have been a righteous God to send every mankind, woman, boy, and girl to hell. But honey, I'm glad he don't stop there. Brother Peter, I'm glad there's a place called heaven. I'm glad God did not let all of you men go. I'm glad God didn't say you're done. I'm done with you. You're trash. You can go on. Honey, I'm glad there's a place somewhere beyond Pluto, somewhere beyond Saturn, somewhere beyond Mars, somewhere beyond the Milky Way. There's a place called heaven. I'm glad I don't have to go to hell. I'm glad I'll never feel the flames of hell. I'm glad, hallelujah unto God, I'll never burn. I'll never see the rotten devil. I'm saved. I'm saved. And I'm going to heaven. I'm thankful tonight, preacher, that I'll never have to burn. Can I say tonight, you said it earlier, we serve a God who gives peace. Tonight, I promise you, if you're unsettled about your soul, I wouldn't even wait till the invitation come. If you're worried and scared about that place, man, come to this altar now. Give your heart to Jesus. You say, Jeff, why are you so excited? Can I tell you why? Bible says, in my Father's house are many mansions. I don't know about you, but I don't live in a mansion. I live in a house. I go by the Biltmore house, preacher, and you look how immaculate and how big it is. You look and see the monstrosity of the place. He didn't say this right here. In my father's mansions are many houses. You know what he said? In my father's house, what I live in, are many Biltmores. Probably a whole lot bigger than that. I don't know if you're smart enough to figure that out. But a mansion ain't no trailer. A mansion ain't no double wide. A mansion ain't, hallelujah, it's a mansion. And it's got my name on it. Here's my fault tonight. If God said he had to go prepare a place, what if tonight... What if tonight he's working on the last gold shingle? What if tonight, I'm using my imagination here, I ain't got Bible for this, it's just my ology here. What if tonight God, preacher's putting on the pearl shutters? What if he takes that onyx and makes the front door out of it? And y'all know how you go to people's houses. And I do landscape. When I look at people's houses, they always have a rug or a sign that says, Welcome to the Phillips household. Established blah, blah, blah. Can I say somewhere up in heaven? Y'all about to preach me to death tonight. Good gracious. Somewhere up in heaven, preacher. Whether it's on Glory Land Boulevard, Hallelujah Way, I don't care where it's at. But I know, I know, I know. There's a mansion somewhere in heaven. If you was to go, good gracious. If you was, Jordan, go look at that door. It says Jeffrey Phillips Mansion. Established August 16, 2006, around 8.48 p.m. Can I say I live with my mom and daddy now? Thank God, saved me a lot of money. But honey, when I get there, me and brother Greg ain't going to share a home. Me and my mom ain't going to share a home. They going to have their mansion. I'm going to have my mansion. And honey, I'm going to have. What if tonight was the very last night God's about to slap the last name on that last mansion? Here's my question tonight. Who has the last spot in heaven? I wonder now, preacher, I was, man, I had, I had church in the shower a while ago. I ain't going to begin to lie. I started getting excited. I wonder before this service is out, I wonder if an older gentleman, older lady tonight in India or Philippines or Guatemala preacher wants to get on their knees and profess to God, God, I love you. Will you save me? And that last spot. And all of a sudden he looks at Gabriel and says, Can I say this? As excited as I am about that, the truth of the reality is 
God forbid, but there would be people sitting inside Emmanuel Baptist Church that God wanted to give you that last mention, but you waited too late. Can I say this? I felt so much God in here this morning, last night. I felt like there was some unfinished business Saturday night. Listen, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you think you've got or what you thought you had. But if you ain't got God, you don't have nothing tonight. Say, Jeff, what's, what's so important about heaven? I tell you what's important about Hebrews 11, verse number 16. But now they desire a better country. That is in heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he hath prepared for them a city. 2 Peter 3, verse number 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Hebrews 13, verse number 14. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. You say, Jeff, man, I'm, I've just been battling here lately. Jeff, I'm struggling. Sis, you come on. Play something if you don't mind about heaven. You know Beulah Land? You know that. If you know it, play that if you don't mind. Man, all the struggling we go through. All the adversity. All, all the sleepless nights. All, all the tears. Anybody in the house like that? Man, you just seem you can't get a break. Sure. And you know you saved. Man, it just seems like you cross one river and you got three more to cross. Man, once one storm comes, Dad's always said you're going in it, going through it, coming out of it. It seems like it's a never-ending break. <laughs> Gracious. Just keeps on coming on. One slap after another. One thing after another. And tonight, your soul burning down. You done forgot all about a place called heaven. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.